Manuel Blanco Romasanta was born in the Spanish city of Galicia on November 18, 1809. Romasanta was blonde-haired, with thin features and short stature. It is believed that he was born to parents who were in good financial condition because he was educated, and this was a rare advantage at that time that only the children of private families had. He was one of their five children. In fact, there is conflicting information about Manuel's upbringing, as truth mixed with myth in his biography, but what is known is that he suffered from a congenital defect at birth that led his parents to believe that he was a girl. During the six years of his life, he was called Manuela, which means that throughout this time he was treated like a girl. After two years had passed, they realized that he had a condition of effeminacy, or hermaphroditism, and from that time problems began to permeate his life. It is said that his reproductive organ was female, but his body secreted male hormones in abundant quantities, which made him a very violent child. Manuel did not receive much attention from his parents, yet he excelled in his studies and learned to read and write at an early age. When Manuel reached his mid-teens, his body stopped growing, and it is said that his height did not exceed 1 meter and 40 centimeters. Despite all this, Roma Santa lived a normal life. He worked as a seamstress and got married when he was 22 years old. However, his marriage did not last long as his wife died in 1833. That is, a year after the marriage. Roma Santa decided to change his career and became a traveling salesman, working his way through Spain and Portugal and then working as a guide in the mountains of Castile. In 1844, his life was turned upside down when he was accused of killing a Leon security man named Vincent Fernandez. He was trying to recover a debt from Manuel for a supplier in Ponferrada. His traces disappeared for a while before his body was found and Manuel was charged with his murder. After that, Manuel tried to escape using a fake passport in the name of Antonio Gomez. His trial session was held in his absence and he was sentenced to ten years in prison and thus lived as a fugitive from justice. Manuel continued to live as a traveler, and a year later, with a forged Portuguese passport, he reappeared and lived among the people under the name Antonio Gomez. Manuel was quick to form friendships, especially with the women of the area, and this surprised the men, especially since Manuel was skillfully helping women with cooking, cleaning, and spinning, and it was uncommon for a man to engage in such work. After a while, and after gaining the trust of the residents of the area, he returned to resume his previous work as a guide in the mountains. Women and children were often sent with him to take them to other cities in order to visit their families or emigrate. He always returned with a letter from the people he had delivered, addressed to their families, saying that they had arrived at their destination safely and thanking Manuel. Of course, at that time, and in the absence of modern means of communication, it was not possible to verify the authenticity of these messages or to ensure that the people who sent them had truly arrived safely at their travel destination. But after a while, suspicions began to swirl around Manuel, especially when he was seen selling clothes in the market that belonged to some of the women and children he was tasked with delivering. These doubts increased after it became clear that some of those whom Manuel was assigned to deliver never reached their destination and disappeared completely. Later, some bodies were found in the mountains. They were found brutally mutilated, as no one was able to identify the bodies, not even the families of the victims. The main reason for the disfigurement of these bodies was that the killer tampered with the bodies to collect all the fat contained in them. All of these things made people doubt Manuel, and the police were informed. Investigations revealed that many of those whom Manuel had accompanied as a guide during the travel had disappeared forever, so an official accusation was issued against him in 1852. I soon learned that Manuel was using the fat of the victims to make soap and ended up selling it, so people called him Sacamanticas, which means the tallow maker in Spanish. In September of the same year, Manuel was arrested in the city of Nambila and later transferred to the town of Olas and tried for the murder of 13 people. He was 43 years old at the beginning of the trial, where he admitted to all his crimes. The surprising thing is that he claimed that he was not responsible for any of his crimes. He said that he was struck by a curse that transformed him into a wolf, and that the first time he transformed was in the mountains, 
where he fell down and his body began to shake and tremble and he began to roll left and right, and he remained transformed for five days. He also claimed that two other people were with him at the time, and that they were also transformed like him, and that the two were named Antonio and Don. Being a wolf led him to pounce on people and prey on them. I remind you, dear reader, that we are talking about the 19th century, that is, the era of famines and the spread of diseases, in addition to the entrenchment of ignorance, so everyone will believe his story. However, his story was rejected by the judge and the public prosecutor, who asked him to appear before them to prove what he claimed. But Manuel defended himself, claiming that he could no longer do so after being cursed for thirteen years. It was later discovered during investigations that four of the victims were killed by wolves, but that the rest of the crimes were the work of humans, for which Manuel was convicted. The trial lasted nine months and concluded on April 9, 1853, and Roma Santa was sentenced to death. But after a while, a man named Phillips sent a letter to the Spanish Minister of Justice stating that Manuel was suffering from a psychological syndrome called acanthropy, or lupus, where the patient imagines that he can transform into a wolf. Phillips claimed that he could cure Manuel by resorting to hypnosis. It is believed that Phillips was a French doctor who lived in London from where he was exiled and returned to his native France. After that, the Minister of Justice sent a letter to the Queen of Spain, Isabella II, requesting that Roma Santa's sentence be commuted in 1854 due to his psychological and physical problems, and in order for his psychological condition to be studied and benefited from in the future. The sentence was changed from death to life imprisonment, and he was then transferred to a prison in the city of Solanova, and he died after a while. Shortly after his arrival, it is said that his death was the result of being shot by one of the jailers because he wanted to see him turn into a wolf according to his thinking. It is also rumored that he died of tuberculosis. There is a thick mystery surrounding the end of Manuel Romasanta, as the prison in which he was imprisoned no longer has any significant records. Two newspapers claimed in 2011 that Manuel died of stomach cancer on December 14, 1863. His wife's death remains a cause for doubt, as there is no evidence that casts doubt on the certainty that he was not responsible for her death. The story of Manuel Romasanta inspired several Spanish films, including Romasanta, The Werewolf Hunt, 2004 The Assens Woods, 1970 Manuel's story eventually became an integral part of Spanish folklore. His story was forgotten outside Spain's borders, but within it he remains one of its most heinous serial killers in the 19th century. Meanings of some of the words used 1. Hermaphroditism is a medical term that refers to the condition of having both male and female reproductive characteristics in the same individual. This condition occurs due to a defect in embryonic development, resulting in mixed or unclear reproductive organs. Hermaphrodites can be True hermaphroditism this is a rare condition where an individual has ovarian tissue and testicular tissue either in the same reproductive gland, such as testicle ovary, or in two separate glands. Pseudohermaphroditism, a condition in which an individual has the genetic characteristics and gonads of one sex but the external genitalia are identical to or mixed with the other sex. These cases require careful evaluation and follow-up by a specialized medical team, and treatments can include surgical and hormonal interventions depending on the case and individual needs. 2. During his rule, Manuel's condition was classified as lycanthropy, and some believe that it is the same condition as the werewolf, but the difference between the terms lycanthropy and werewolf can be explained as follows. Lycanthropy Broad Scope Lycanthropy is a broader term that refers to the transformation of a human into a wolf, in mythology, or belief in the ability to transform, in a clinical or psychological context. This term includes both the mythical aspect and the psychological state. Clinical context In a clinical context, lycanthropy refers to a rare psychological condition where a person believes they can transform into an animal, not necessarily a wolf. This is known as clinical lycanthropy. Mythological context. In mythology, 
lycanthropy can refer to various myths and tales of humans turning into wolves, and the term is sometimes used more broadly to include transformations into other types of animals. Werewolf Specific creature, a werewolf refers specifically to a mythical creature from folklore, a human who transforms into a wolf or wolf-like creature with a humanoid form, often during a full moon. The concept of a werewolf is a specific case of lycanthropy centered around wolves. Folklore and cultural entity, the werewolf has deep roots in folklore and cultural narrative. It has been the subject of numerous tales, films, and books, and is often characterized by aspects such as state transmission via bites, weakness to silver, and involuntary transformation during a full moon. In short, lycanthropy is a broader term that can refer to both a psychological state and any mythical transformation of a human into an animal. In contrast, a werewolf is specifically a creature of folklore that represents the transformation of a human into a wolf. The werewolf is essentially a subsection of the broader concept of lycanthropy when used in the context of folklore.